The Euphrates is one of the most important rivers in the world, spanning from Turkey to Syria and then Iraq. This long stretch of river has been the major source of water in the region for over 10,000 years, but now this ancient river is drying up, caused by terrifying circumstances and plunging millions into an era of unprecedented drought. But the drying of the Euphrates doesn't come as a shock as it has been predicted in a terrifying prophecy that seems to be coming true as strange and ancient discoveries have been found underneath the dried riverbed, findings that have left the world in shock. The Euphrates River holds a special place in human history, as it's responsible for creating the Fertile Crescent, a part of ancient Mesopotamia where the first and oldest recorded agricultural practices originally began. In times of old, the Euphrates provided a constant source of clean water for men to practice farming and other agricultural practices, which later spread to other parts of the world. The Euphrates was also one of the first rivers to be recorded in the Bible, as it was among the four rivers that was said to originate from the Garden of Eden. In biblical records, the Euphrates served as a key dividing barrier between the East and West, shaping key events such as wars and invasions that have in turn shaped the distribution of people and power in much of Asia and North Africa. The Euphrates is the longest river in Asia, and together with the river Tigris, makes up the Fertile Crescent. The river flows through steep gorges and canyons in Turkey, then through lowlands in Syria, before cutting clear across Iraq and entering into the Persian Gulf. But this ancient river is now drying up with a significant drop in water levels across the length of the river's path. Farmlands have become barren, as there is no source of irrigation water for the crops, pushing villages into unusually long droughts. The fishing economies of these locations are now practically non-existent, as whatever small pools of water are left are contaminated or undrinkable. The once fertile crescent that gave birth to the world's agriculture is now a desolate land. It is now practically unrecognizable. But the question is what caused this once powerful flowing river to dry up almost overnight? What does it mean for those who depend on its waters to survive? While there is something biblical and almost unnatural that is believed to have caused the river to dry up, there is a slew of strange things that have been found underneath the river, and there has been a string of human activities that have added to the river's untimely demise. The Euphrates makes up a large part of the economies of Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, with each country tapping into the river's vast resources to maintain agricultural hydroelectric power plants and irrigation water for farming. All three countries have had numerous clashes regarding the control and usage of the Euphrates, with Turkey having the most control over the flow of the river as it originates from the Armenian mountains in East Turkey. The treaties between these three countries go as far back as World War I, when the borders in and around the region were drawn following the Treaty of Luzern in 1923. The treaty stipulated how the three states of the Euphrates would utilize the water in a way that would be mutually beneficial to all three countries. Concerning the number of dams built by Turkey would significantly affect the flow of the Euphrates into Syria, with much of its effects being placed on Iraq, an agreement was reached in 1946 in which Turkey agreed to report any constructions on the Euphrates River. This would also cause Iraq to construct dams on Turkish territory to maintain the flow of the Euphrates such that the population within Iraq is not adversely affected by any constructions made in Turkey. Syria and Turkey were the first to complete hydroelectric dams on the Euphrates barely within a year of each other to fulfill reservoirs in 1975. These two countries combined have more dams and hydroelectric power plants on the Euphrates with Syria having over 10 six major dams located on the Euphrates alone, and Turkey having well over 22 dams and hydroelectric power plants all situated along the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. Iraq, on the other hand, barely has two major dams on the Euphrates, both of which are in poor condition as they were built in the late 1980s and have seen very little use. Both Syria and Turkey have also built smaller dams on the tributaries and streams connected to the Euphrates further maximizing the river's potential much to the detriment of Iraq. The launch of the GAP project was Turkey's way of harnessing the irrigation and hydroelectricity production potential of the Euphrates River for its southeastern province. The project provides for a total area of 80,000 square kilometers and affects over 10 million people and provides irrigation water to nearly 1 million hectares of agricultural land located on the Euphrates Basin. The construction of the Ataturk Dam was a significant win for the Turkish people. Standing over 600 feet higher and nearly 6,000 feet long, 
the mega structure is capable of holding over 90% of the total discharge of the Euphrates. While this is all impressive, it spells discomfort for Syria and outright doom for Iraq. The World Bank initially withheld funding until an official agreement was met between the three nations on sharing water from the Euphrates, but that didn't stop the cascading effect of the numerous dams being built in Turkey and Syria from affecting Iraq. Perhaps most devastatingly, over the last two decades, water flow from the Euphrates River has been continually reduced, subsequently depriving regions and areas that depend on the river for irrigation and drinking water. Sometime in April 2014, Turkey began to drastically reduce the flow of the Euphrates into Syria, and in May of that year, the flow was cut off almost completely, causing the river to terminate almost completely at the Turkish-Syrian border. This action by Turkey was in clear violation of the initial agreement reached by the three nations in 1987, where Turkey had committed to releasing a minimum of 500 cubic meters of water per second across the Syrian border. The drying up of the Euphrates River has had a more devastating effect on Iraq as the country has created an intricate network of canals connecting the Euphrates to several lakes and reservoirs. These reservoirs were used to store excess floodwaters, resulting from the Euphrates, which was subsequently used for irrigation purposes for agriculture and farmland. One of the major canals was the main outfall drain, also called the Third River, between the Euphrates and the Tigris River. This canal was an essential part of the internal irrigation network of the country, as it prevented soil salinization by providing irrigation water and also allowed large freight barges to navigate from the Euphrates and Tigris up to Baghdad. Today, the Third River is all but dried up as satellite images show that the long stretch of water has practically vanished. The closing of these dams on the Euphrates and the Turkish region has had a devastating impact on the environment of the surrounding countries. These effects are mostly felt in Syria and Iraq, with almost 400 villages and settlements within the Euphrates Basin having their source of water completely vanish almost overnight. Almost 200,000 people across the Euphrates Basin have been displaced and have had to be resettled in other less affected areas. Many of the displaced people were extremely unhappy with their new situation. Their large lakes and reservoirs all have extremely wide surface areas, and in a region with extremely high temperatures, this has led to an unprecedented increase in evaporation which has facilitated the total loss of water from these regions. While the subsequent droughts currently experienced along the Euphrates River could be attributed to the construction and closure of dams across the river, other opinions make mention of a prophecy regarding the drying up of the Euphrates, which we are seeing unfold in today's world. In the Old Testament of the Bible, the Euphrates played a critical role, as it was one of the very first rivers to originate from the Garden of Eden and also acted as a means of support for the Israeli army the ancient Babylonians and Assyrians built their empire in what is now referred to today as Mesopotamia, which is the current area of land surrounded on both sides by both the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers. According to biblical references, the Euphrates followed through Babylon as it served as the city's source of nourishment for its crops and provided water for the Babylonian people. In a nutshell, the city of Babylon could not have survived without the Euphrates, and archaeological records would show that the Babylonians built structures in and around the Euphrates River. But just as the Euphrates River served as a protective barrier around the Babylonian Empire. However, it also played a key role in the downfall of one of the earliest advanced civilizations in human history. Ancient archaeological records state that the city of Babylon was captured by the Persian army, which was only made possible as the Persians were able to divert the flow of the Euphrates, thereby completely cutting off one section of the river. They then proceeded to invade Babylon at night marching across the riverbed itself. But the book of Revelations tells us a horrifying prophecy of the drying up of the Euphrates, according to Revelation 6.12, which says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, but Christianity isn't the only religion that mentions the fate of the Euphrates. In Islamic tradition, a compilation of Sahih al-Bahai records that even the Prophet Muhammad prophesies that the hour will not come to pass before the river Euphrates dries up to unveil the mountains of gold, for which people will fight. Ninety-nine of every hundred will die, and every man among them will say, maybe I am the one to remain alive. To non-religious people, this may sound like religious myths, 
but there have been some strange occurrences observed on the riverbed of the Euphrates. As people have been venturing in the areas of the river that were previously inaccessible, they have discovered caves and caverns in strange shapes that have nothing in common with other erosive rock formations. Many who investigated these sites mentioned that they have a striking similarity to prison bars designed to hold someone or something prisoner. And in addition to these bizarre caves, archaeologists and even common people have recorded various terrifying sounds coming from the ground. Some have described the sounds coming from these caves. Many report of groans and growls, with some even stating that they even heard what could be likened to moving chains. Religious bodies have explained this to be the fulfillment of biblical prophecy, but this leaves one major question. If the drying up the Euphrates is indeed the fulfillment of prophecy, does this mean fallen angels will soon emerge to wipe out one-third of the human population? These questions have led to even more questions that have yet provided answers, but what we do know for a fact is that the region surrounding the Euphrates River is threatened by desertification that could wipe out nearly 40% of the region. So there you are, guys. What do you think about the reasons for the Euphrates drying up? Is it mere international politics or is there something more otherworldly involved? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.